Marty up north, welcome back. <laughs> what a week it's been so far. Holy cow. It's been seven days since we last spoke. And I I predicted this last well, I didn't predict it, but I I, I knew it was going to be one of these weeks, right? Just looking on the agenda of what was happening this week, parliament resumes, a few by-elections, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's been what are we? We're three days into it and and it's been a yeah, it's been a fun week. We're back to you, well, summer was summer's over, so now we're back to politicians are sitting in, and 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 now that politicians are sitting, it's getting stupid again, right? Weren't we better off when they were not sitting? I mean, I, I, yes, I we were. <laughs> the less government does, the better off we are. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Like you know, I asked this question: like, would you pay to send Justin Trudeau on vacation for the next four hundred days? I would. Yeah, like, absolutely. See yeah. you later. Bye See bye. You later. <laughs> did you have this on your bingo card though uh for this year did you have a uh, leader <laughs> major leader of a major party threatening people on the street because uh that's that's where we're at today holy nope. cow this was uh this was an interesting one now many people having different opinion differing opinions on this so we'll just let the video play out because uh i mean uh, just uh, yeah let's see it with that aggression is that why you're choosing war with russia <laughs> okay so <laughs> here we are uh yeah. so somebody said something there i'm pretty sure one of those guys called him a corrupted bastard and I mean, for one, have the guts to just say it, just say it. I mean, what's he going to do about it? He's going to get in your face uh, and in front of cameras and everybody's going to strike you. I don't think so. Well, that uh, would be yeah, that would be a career ending for a politician to strike anybody like that would be bad, right? But well, except uh, John Crutchen, obviously. Well, Crutchen did it in, you know, Crutchen did it fairly. I mean, Crutchen was walking down the street and somebody sort of got really in his face and close to him and Crutchen grabbed him by the neck. So I, I think he, you know, we, we, we respected that. But, you know, when I watched that clip, a couple of things come to mind. First of all, assuming it's real, if it's real, then, you know, uh, I could see how 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 Jagmeet is getting frustrated and tired of being, you know, I mean, it's got to wear on them that they're being called all sorts of names all the time. Although I think some of them have a pretty thick skin when it comes to that shit. Like they, 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 they're, they're so narcissistic that they, they tune it out. Right. I mean, if you and I, if I was walking out the street every day and somebody said, Hey, Marty, you're a piece of shit. I think it would get on my case, but the fact that it doesn't get on their case that much says something about their personalities. But, but I, after looking at the clip a couple of times, I'm not convinced that it's not a little bit staged. And, and the reason I'll say that is because I'm familiar with Parliament Hill, and that's the backside of the Parliament building. Like, you know, over to the right would be the Rito, the Ottawa River. And um, and you're not allowed there. Like, there's cars parked there, right? You saw there's two, three cars parked there. That's That's not general public access. Like you and I could never go on that side of the parliament building, especially now because they built the new house of commons back there. So whoever, whoever is back there are credentialed people. And so, you know, it's not, it's, those aren't Joe public that you, you and I cannot go there. That's why, that's why I'm a little suspect about this. Right. And, and, I, and quite honestly, I mean, I'm getting suspect at a lot of these things, right? Whether it's Jack yeah. Mead or whether it's Donald Trump's second assassination attempt or whether it's, you know, um, Trudeau, you know, Trudeau pretending to be, uh, well, even the one of the, the the guy at Algoma, right, two weeks ago. I mean, you like we're we're so jaded. Well, that did now. not work out in the, that did not work out in no. the favor of Trudeau or Jagmeet Singh that yeah. one. So that yeah. that's what makes me think that it wasn't staged in my yeah, yeah. in my opinion anyway a lot of a lot of opinions going out here i have a chippy x saying now jugmeet singh is putting canada on the map of how elected officials should not be engaging with citizens 
For years, Jugmead uh, has disparaged, shamed, gaslit, and ignored Canadians expressing their concerns and views. It is no surprise that they're angry. Now, <laughs> this was, this was a, an interesting take. Now, Tracy Wilson says, uh, uh, sorry, I popped this on the screen here. Tracy Wilson says, this is a win for Jugmead. Uh, have a rule, say what you mean and defend it. What a stupid look on the, for the protester. He got absolutely owned by Singh here. To, to which I, I actually replied to this and say, you know, the protester looks gutless in this. You're going to say something, stick to your guns, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Stick with it. But I wouldn't call this a win for Jugmeat, uh, someone who practices martial arts. Jugmeat showcased his Brazilian jiu-jitsu as a reason for his ability to keep it cool under pressure. This video demonstrates the opposite of that. In fact, this, this is what's funny about this whole thing. Uh, Nar City, Ottawa even ran an article saying Jugmeat Singh said his martial arts training made him feel safe when he was threatened. <laughs> this was published today. Okay. I was trying not to laugh as I'm telling you about this. It, it's it's this funny. And in fact, he's been showcasing this for some time. He's even <laughs> done demonstrations about his uh, skills with the, the martial arts and showing it off to people but uh yeah oh, if, I, if... I, I just noticed something so that's jack me interesting that even while he's showcasing he has this kerpan or whatever his little knife hanging from his neck there yeah i don't know if that's uh really that's a religious regulation. thing i mean they no no it's a religious thing they they all wear them right a a, a oh of a course yeah Sikhs are allowed to wear those but uh, yeah that that doesn't that's not how i would spar right you you don't spar all dressed up in the <laughs> no, not at all. So yeah. use this opportunity to go on Twitter and say, by now you've probably seen the video. And this is probably what leads you to believe that this is fake, because he comes out with this with this uh you know tweet immediately. For days now, bullies in Ottawa have been spewing hate and harassing Canadians who don't agree with them. An indigenous woman being called a Nazi uh staff being harassed, journalists being yelled at. That's the that's the country for Pierre that Pierre Polyev wants. Me, I believe everyone should feel safe walking our streets. I believe we need to stand up for to the bullies and shut down hate. Canadians believe in lifting each yeah. other up, not tearing each other down. Stand with us. This yeah, is I'm not sold. I, I'm 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 not sold. I, I now now okay now I, I was fifty fifty. Now I'm flipped more to the it was stage. <laughs> really really for me it's because of where it was filmed like if i you know if we'd had more time i would have gone to google earth and showed you on where that spot is and i truly think that that is a restricted area it's not because if you see other videos of like uh you know wiretap or or dancy or some of those guys like they wait or or karima they wait outside the main gates on i can't remember the name of the street there and and when politicians like uh, today i mean they all got accosted right i mean somebody asked uh gil Bo some question somebody like they, they they run the gauntlet when they get out of parliament they have to run the gauntlet and 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 i honestly think where jagmeet was he he is it's it's not the same area but any but it's and you know no i didn't from the guy he had to turn around and walk like like five yeah. meters to get back to the guy and threaten him uh but yeah it's not a good look for him for a guy who says i can keep my calm when i'm cool or keep keep my calm when it when pressure's high no he can't he can't when the going gets tough he just showed that he's gonna flip out on people he's gonna get in people's face and he's gonna threaten them with physical violence and that's that's not a, that's not a good look for a politician Wait, which is why i'm not answer. a politician because i would snap all day long <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that's hilarious actually no now, i wouldn't snap you know what i wouldn't snap i would welcome that that banter like i you know i'd come out and go like whatever you want to ask me a question ask me a question like you know back to i've said this a million times like if you if you're true to yourself and you don't lie and you stand for something like you have real convictions then shit we'll talk all day long man i have no problem with that you know yeah, these, these guys cannot be you know, Christian Freeland, Stephen Gilbo, all of them, they cannot take an off the cuff question unscripted because it they they A, they're not that smart, and B, they 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 don't have their strong convictions, and there's so many lies floating around in their heads that they're better off to just say nothing, is what they are, you know.
Oh, well, dodge the question. That's yeah, that's Christopher yeah. Freeland. She's uh, she's figured that one out. And so, so is Kamala Harris, apparently. I don't know if you saw one of those videos recently. She had an interview where she was asked specifically about the economy and she just talked about her childhood. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this is this is where we're at in both countries, uh, the United States as well. In fact, there is there's been an ad that went out and it was a parody ad and it's led to um, some Gavin Newsom actually putting legislation through in the United States. This is this is a crazy story, actually. And I'm surprising you to this one because I thought you'd you'd find this entertaining. Now, this is the ad. Now we have to scrub back here to Gavin Newsom saying, I just signed a bill to make this illegal in the in the state of California. You can no longer knowingly distribute an ad or other election communications that contain material de uh, deceptive material de deceptive content, including deep fakes. Now, wow. this is this is uh, in response to before he said manipulating a voice ad uh, voice in an ad like this should be illegal, which uh, is protected speech. It's part. I, I don't know if you read if anyone maybe Gavin, Gavin Newsom's read the uh, the the Constitution. It's it's right at the beginning. It's the First Amendment uh free speech and it's been held up by courts here here's uh hustler versus farewell uh fallwell 1983 that uh, you know protected this anyway let's get to the ad because this is absolutely hilarious and uh yeah everybody's just got to see this because somebody asked or elon asked what video is he talking about <laughs> and of course here's the video I, Kamal Harris, and your Democrat candidate for president because Joe Biden finally exposed his senility at the debate. Thanks, Joe. I was selected because I am the ultimate diversity hire. I'm both a woman and a person of color. So if you criticize anything I say, you're both sexist and racist. I may not know the first thing about running the country, but remember, that's a good thing if you're a deep state puppet. I had four years under the tutelage of the ultimate deep state puppet, a wonderful mentor, Joe Biden. Joe taught me rule number one, carefully hide your total incompetence. I take in significant things and I discuss them as if they're significant. And I believe that exploring <laughs> the significance of the insignificant is in itself significant. Talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time, and there is such great significance to the passage of time. Another trick is trying to sound black. <laughs> I pretend to celebrate Kwanzaa, and in my speeches, I always do my best Barack Obama impression. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's tight. And okay, look, maybe my work addressing the root causes of the border crisis were catastrophic, but my knowledge of international politics is truly shocking. The United States shares a very important relationship, which is an alliance with the Republic of North Korea. It is an alliance that is strong and enduring. And just remember, when voting this November, it is important to see what can be unburdened by what has been. And by what has been, I mean, Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the country went to sh over the past four years? You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> that crazy. That is the best ad I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's just, it's astronomical. So uh, Gavin Newsom has said he's going to make us, make this illegal in the state of California. So anybody posting this, um, apparently he's going to be breaking a new law that he just put through. <laughs> yeah, but that's like, well, I, I mean that's a slippery slope right i mean that to me that's the kind of ad that uh you know saturday night live would have done something like this right they would have absolutely done a skit that looked just like that i guess well, when use an impersonator instead of a deep fake it sounds sure, i guess like i I, person, I guess right? that's the that's the worry right i mean her voice sounds amazing but i'm I, I can see how they can just clip bits of her voice and put it together i don't know like i i it's pretty it, let me backtrack when I was a kid, I remember there there were laws when I was a kid, right? You couldn't advertise certain things be on on kids' channels, you know, between say seven and eight o'clock in the morning. I can understand that. So while I'm while I'm a kid watching a commercial, you got to be careful. You wouldn't want to put a deep fake uh, aimed specifically at little kids. But if they want to play this commercial at nine o'clock p.m. 
on the news and some some 45 year old human being is not smart enough to know that this is a deep fake or parody, <laughs> a parody. it's not my job right it's not my job to to it's nobody's job to protect everybody right not the 45 eh, anyways it, the end of the day lowest common denominator is yeah, yeah is, there, I think the, the phrase you're looking for but this is what, what okay so this the whole story gets better it but there's not a lot better. of deep fake in there by the way sorry but there's not a lot of deep fake right i mean if they if it if uh okay gavin you want to ban that then then if i'm the guy producing that commercial i just change kamala's voice a little bit nothing else everything else is totally legal making fun of things that she said and putting it together in a video like that, like that's entirely factual. There's well, nothing. That's, so, so they used yeah. AI to to mimic her voice and to say sure, those things. Sure, sure. But an impersonator could do the same thing. Totally, totally, absolutely. Totally. And there, there's there's plenty of people that can do great impersonations and sound just like the person. It was, Bingo. you know, it would and it would, it would go between the different things. But it gets even better. It gets even better because the Babylon Bee got involved in uh -oh. this because uh -oh. they're very, very into free speech. And Elon Musk had to tweet this one out. He says his best ad ever breaking. The Babylon Bee has obtained his exclusive official 100% real Gavin Newsom election ad. <laughs> Let's get into this one. Oh. Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. This is a message for the people of America given in my authentically recorded non AI voice. Thanks to my leadership over the last several years, California has become a world leader in extremist left-wing governance. My policies were so effective that almost one million people are now fleeing the state every year. We even ran out of U-Hauls. During the COVID <laughs> pandemic, I locked everyone in their homes and shut down businesses for months. Not the French Laundry, though. That's my favorite restaurant. Last year, I cleaned up the dangerous, messy streets of San Francisco, you know, because Chinese Communist President Xi was coming, and I really wanted to impress him. He's my boss, after all. This year, I signed legislation that allows me to take custody of your kid if you refuse to give him artificial hormones and chop off his genitals. Because if you don't do that, you're a bigot, and bigots shouldn't be allowed to have kids. I've also led the way in green energy by banning all cars that don't run on electricity. Then I banned almost all the electricity. This is smart leadership. <laughs> on my watch, the cost of living and homelessness have skyrocketed. Schools are failing. Drug dealers and human traffickers are pouring across the border. And poop has covered the sidewalks of San Francisco. This is the positive, joyful vision we offer as Democrats. That's why I'm enthusiastically endorsing Kamala Harris for president in 2024. She'll do to the country everything I did in California. Anyway, I'm California Governor Gavin Newsom, and I approve this 100% real message, which is a recording of my voice without the assistance of any AI whatsoever. <laughs> this isn't a deep fake, and you can rest assured that it isn't because I just signed an unconstitutional law outlawing deep fakes. No one would dare violate it. Thank you, and science bless America. And right. science bless America. Yeah. Oh, okay. Man. So yeah, yeah. So I. This is a great fight. This is a great fight because it'll. It, it. You know, if anyone's, if anyone's, you know, prosecuted under this law, it's going to go right to the Supreme Court. I mean, or, or I, it'll I, just I, get kicked out, right? I, I'd, I'd be okay <laughs> with. I'd be okay with um with making the pr the people who made the video put a little disclaimer either at the end or at the beginning and it's a very fast disclaimer it's like you know the the the, the micro what, micro machine guy <laughs> yeah goes by and says uh whatever but can you you know when I watch that Trudeau and Jagmeet and others in this country we they are lucky I mean Trudeau and Jagmeet thing they get it hard can you imagine like they're to meet like they're they're even they're even wonkier than almost any American politician. They would be, they would be roasted. Oh my God. I often ask that on Twitter. Can you guys do this for Trudeau? Like, please, like whoever did that commercial, like do one for Trudeau, you know? Oh, uh, absolutely. Well, yeah. the U.S. happens to have a demographic of what? Over 350 million people. You think a lot, a lot of the talent is yeah. in the United States and obviously. Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> it's going to be, uh, it's going to be an interesting campaign in the, yeah, and then uh, what did I see today? Uh, uh, Kamala Harris is getting the big endorsement of um, 
of uh, Oprah Winfrey and then Oprah's coming out. They're doing a show together. Like it's crazy, 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 crazy. Yeah. Ah, yeah back to our crazy. stuff here though. I mean, we had crazy stuff here too, right? I mean, um, well, what's yeah. happening in Alberta? Let's talk about some of that stuff. Cause that that's crazy. I never expected to see some of the things that I'm seeing in Canada let alone out of Alberta. We're talking about re-education, this whole concept of, of having to, you know, get brow beaten by some dude in a dress telling you you have to stop thinking the way you think. This is what's it, it, been happening. Yeah, that, 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 that was insane, right? It's not just re-education. I mean, it's like, what, what she kept asking. Well, let's put some context a little bit, right? Uh, do you want to play the yeah. clip first and put the context? Or do you want me to just give a wee bit of context? or Give a wee uh, bit and then I'll play a part of the clip there. Sure. So so we um, during the election last year, which was May last year, like 14 months ago, one of the candidates for the Conservative Party of Alberta was a lady named Jennifer Johnson. And she made disparaging comments about pride in the organ i can't i don't even know exactly what her comments were but she made some bad comments and and uh, like two weeks before the election danielle smith uh the party danielle and the party kicked her out of the party and um and and she stayed and she ran as an independent instead of as a conservative and she won as an independent so good for her so she won as an independent and that, she's from panoka man which is like you know, central north. It's it's north of Red Deer, between Red Deer and Edmonton. It's it's a uh, it's cowboy country. So uh, she stayed true to her values, then uh, and got elected. People. So th that says a lot, right? So whatever her comments were that got her out of favor with the conservatives, it didn't get her out of favor with the electorate, and they voted. This for is her. the weird part too, because I I went looking for the the quote, yeah. and you can't find the full quote anywhere. You'll have little snippets of the quote here and there to make her sound bad, but nothing with the full entire quote. Because she didn't make the quote during the election campaign or in the last couple of years. The quote is old. Like, it's one of these things where I'm running suddenly and somebody goes, oh, hey, here's the quote of Marty in 2017 where he said that uh, he was against gay pride parades. It's like, yeah, I said that. And so she got kicked out of that. Her, her electorates called it a nothing burger. She got voted in. She's been an effective, awesome MLA ever since. And I've, I've, uh, I've met her several times. She's, she's regularly invited to some of the events that I go to. And um, now, so this is where it so gets her fun. quote. I'm just going to get into oh, yeah. the quote. So the, sure. the quote that's being sp uh, spread around is that she compared transgender people to poop. And that's what it Gavin was. Gavin Newsom was... just did it. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 quote in question was her basically saying like you know a few bad apples kind of quote, right? If, if, you know if if you know the quote, yeah. few bad apples will upset the whole apple cart. And th this was a, a quote about cookie dough. You know, you know, a, a spoonful of poop in the cookie dough it, it ruins the cookie. It, ruins the yeah, broth it ruins the whole dough. Yeah. Right, that's yeah. it. So yeah. that was the analogy, and of course they ran with that. Appa apparently, she was also speaking about how they have some of the best schools in in North America, and and she was saying, well, what good is what good is having a student that you know uh, scores really well if they're if they've become uh, you know, unable to have children later. And that's, that's a terrible tragedy. And that's what she was saying. Yeah. Um, as far as I could get with the quotes, but again, I couldn't find the full quote because nobody's releasing the full thing, just snippets of it. But yeah, anyway, go ahead. Go so, ahead. so in the last, uh, so recently the questions keeps coming up to Danielle, will you let her back into the fold? Like, will you bring her back as a conservative MLA? And uh, and there was this rumor that she had to undergo this training in order to be readmitted. And that's where it gets confusing, because what happened is she was I don't I wouldn't necessarily call it training, but she she was in some conference room in a Zoom call with a bunch of people from the LGBTQ community. And and that those conversations that occurred recently got released. And that's that's this is where the, the story gets really wacko, because, um, the, you know, if it was she she got ambushed in there and, and the leader of this LGBTQ training course, community, whatever, is like a, a nut bar who asked her repeatedly, like, is a trans woman a woman? And and Jennifer Johnson, the MLA, would not 
um, what's the word? Wouldn't, you know, change her conviction. Wouldn't, wouldn't, um, you know, she, she said, I, I just want time to think about that. She's like, well, what she basically said, what does it matter? Like, can't we just all get along? And the LGBTQ person said, Nope, we're done. Blah, blah, blah. And so maybe play that clip and we can, if you have it, or if not, um, yeah, right here. yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw it over to Victoria now and uh, she'll just touch on a few, a little bit more about that. Uh, hi, Jennifer. I really want to thank you for meeting with us today and uh, taking the time to uh, try to signal that this is more of a priority for you. Absolutely. Um, Delighted to meet with you all. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Um, before I would ever say, though, that this was a productive meeting and be counted to the list of, of contacts that you've reached out to in the queer community, I have to know a few things of where you sit. Um, will you state on the record right now that trans women are women? I've never been asked that before. Will you say that on the record right now? No, I want to have some time to think on that. Okay, well, that's me. Um, have a great day. And I will be speaking out against this meeting because you are clearly not ready to have this. So I'm not going to be added to the list of meetings that you are going to have with people where you say, well, I met this person and this person because no, 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 no. You can't say I've had these consultations and use that as justification for you to work your way back into caucus, which is why we know you're really here. This only happens. This meeting is only happening because you're on Twitter in the Twitter sphere, and people are debating whether or not you're going to be led back into caucus. And Premier Smith is debating that. And so you need to do some PR work. And I'm not going to be your Band-Aid. I'm not going to be your pink washing, unless you can tell me right now that you believe that I, as a trans woman, right now, right here, am a woman, then we don't have a lot to work on here. You want to talk about listening to the community? If you can't start with that basic foundational principle that we are who we say we are, in our bones, then I don't think we're on the same page for working forward. So I'll give you one last chance. Are trans women women? Will you say that on the record right now? Victoria, we can disagree on things. And not on that. Still not on my it. identity. No, 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 no. Not and on I that. I can still care no. about you, even if we disagree. Wonderful. But I will be speaking out against this meeting 100% if you can't say that right now, because I'm not going to have you add my name to the list of meetings that you've had to show that you're, quote, doing the work because you're not doing the work. The work is the inner work. You're learning the outer work. You're learning what you're allowed to say in public and what you're not, so you don't get in this situation again, because you got caught saying what you really thought. There you and go. you did think that. But you haven't shown that you've changed. Because if you can't respect us, then how can I work with you? If you don't believe that I am a woman sitting right here, right now, how on earth are you saying that you're working with me? What work have you done then if you can't start with, yes, Victoria, you are a woman? Can we disagree and still respect each other? No. Goodbye. <laughs> like, that you was know, the it, clip, yeah. Yeah, it's so sad, right? I mean, um, we can't have a dialogue unless you believe in my beliefs. That's what that trans person was saying. And and yeah. did you hear that? I mean, in no in no other religious case are is that acceptable, right? Yeah. So a uh, Christian can't say to a Buddhist or a Muslim or whatever, you we we're we're not gonna you, we're not gonna allow you to be politically in this realm. We're gonna boycott you politically if you yeah. don't uh you know convert to my religion. Yeah, if, yeah, if, that, yeah, if, yeah. If that were to be the case. You'd get thrown out. You get thrown out. You'd have, uh, you know, associations coming after you, the government coming after you, probably possibly legal trouble. Why? Why is it OK in this case? Because, I mean, for all intents and purposes, the woke ideology is a religion. It's the it's the godless religion. It, it, it's a complicated story. This one. Poor Jennifer's trying to do the right thing. Reach out to the community and, and uh, listen to them and whatever. But she will not. Uh, change her conviction, which I applaud her for, and 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 yeah, it's just messy. And and at the end of the day, it shows it shows a little bit of the insane side of of, of the LGBTQ community. Oh, it gets more insane, Marty. Like this oh. is the profile of that. Person. Yeah, yeah. Carla I, I, Marx. I'm being nice, to be honest. I'm being nice. <laughs> right. I'm being nice. Like right. I mean, he's, yeah. <laughs> And 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 uh, J.K. Rowling got in on this one, so J.K. Rowling retweeted that story, and oh, then no Elon, kidding. yo, yeah, no, no, because yeah, I mean, we know where she stands on the LGBTQ Absolutely. community, 
same thing. And then and then Elon Musk retweeted J.K. Rowling. So it's like, oh, okay, great. So Alberta is on the world on on the on the world stage for all the wrong reasons again. You know, good for you there, Lady Marks, whatever. For uh, but that's just one of the things in Alberta this week. I mean, you know, it, well, it's before been a, we move on, before yeah, yeah. we move on, I do want to put this out there. So since I made my video this morning, Jennifer Johnson has put out a uh, a post on her Facebook page. She did. I, I didn't see anything on Twitter, but on her Facebook page, she put out a statement saying uh, a, sta a statement from Jennifer Johnson, MLA for La Combi uh, Panoka. So this statement is addressed to the me uh, it addresses the meeting between me, Jennifer Johnson, and the uh, the in independent MLA for La Combi Poka Panoka and the uh, Lapongi Pride Society, Pinoca Pride Society, Central Alberta Pride Society, and multiple others. These societies requested a meeting with me, and I was happy to meet with them and hear their uh, concerns as my uh, constituents. I look forward to a respectful and informative meeting with them. This meeting was at the request and arranged by the constituent of the uh, Lacombe Pinoca riding, and I was happy to accept their invitation to meet Danielle Smith, her office and the UCP caucus and party were in no way involved or in or aware of this meeting. And contrary to speculation, this meeting has nothing to do with my future as an independent member of the legislature. I support the work of Danielle Smith and her uh, UC, UPC or UCP government and look forward to working with all members of the legislature in the fall session on the parental rights legislation and other important bills. Thank you to everyone who has reached out to me in the last couple of days. I very much appreciate all your kind words and encouragement. Wow. Uh, just because you're, um, just because you got a few Alberta listeners that are like uh, going nuts over here, it's Lacombe. It's not like oh, well, right. <laughs> right, man. I'm in BC. Give me a yeah, break. yeah. No, I, I get, and and I, I and I was like, what's he saying? But I can see it when you read it that way. Yeah, it definitely looks like Lacombe or something like that. But it's uh, it's Lacombe. <laughs> um, it's Lacombe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So not the end of this story, right? Not the end of this story. No. Um, you know, still very I, coercive. This this whole concept. You know, there's this political will to be in like the, the people of that of that the of that riding support her and they yeah. want her as their uh, as MLA. their representative. And she's even reaching out to people who don't support her in her riding. And this is the treatment she gets. It's it's unbelievable the audacity of, uh, and, you know, certain communities and, and the way that they behave with the power that they know that they have in in uh, canadian politics at the moment and, and i don't think that the uh, lady uh from the pride side helped her case at all like she she it didn't help her case uh, jennifer you know when we talk about who came out on top jag meet or whatever i say in this one jennifer came on top she oh, stayed absolutely. calm that's a nice calm great answer right can we still agree to be friends and the other's like nope Okay, whatever. That's that's you know, <laughs> we, we can which 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 forward, one of the yeah. things that I've been talking about in this whole week and uh, in the last couple of weeks to Danielle Smith is, you are th this is an example. You are trying to cater to a side of the province and to a population that will never vote for you anyways, Danielle. So why bother? Like why, why bother? bother? Absolutely. Why bother? why bother? Like just just be a conservative and 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 honor your values and don't pander to somebody else's. And, and and go from there. I mean, it's been a bad week for Danielle Smith. Like she she had a, you know, everything she's done, she's trying desperately to, to win favors in, you know, she has an annual general meeting coming up in November and there's a vote there mm -hmm. on her leadership. So she's just trying to hit with everything to see what'll stick. Yesterday she had a press release and everybody's like, oh, okay, what's she going to announce? And she announced that she's going to use the surplus money from Alberta. We're like, we have this $4 billion surplus to build more high schools because of the uh, influx of immigrants coming into the province. And, and then, and then at first it sounded good, but then when you listen to it and then you go see the comments online, you go, Oh my God. Like, you know, she, she, well, I know my immediate feeling on that would be, that, Oh, so I paid a bunch of taxes to benefit people who are just coming now. Uh, exactly. Why? 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 And, why would and, I? And and then she to tried to preface it by saying, "Oh, it's um, uh, it's it's a it's a problem with immigration, and we don't control immigration." And it's like, okay, interesting. Why then? Why did you put up billboards all across the province and the country inviting people to come here? 
that's one thing. But then, you know, you saw the fallout of that. So now you got you got Trudeau reversing himself on immigration. You got Danielle reversing herself on immigration. You got both of them blaming each other. You got Quebec. Like it's this whole immigration thing is a, is a mess. And again, I don't give a shit. It, you're all in it, like all the politicians in this country. I've asked them, like, uh, you know, we said this last week, I'm losing faith in all you guys. Like, do your damn job. And immigration mm -hmm. is high on the list of concerns that we as Canadians have. It's making the cost of living higher, renting higher, everything higher. And you guys are just pointing fingers at each other. No, stop the immigration, get roll up your sleeves and get down to solving problems like they're not. Well, I think I think it's it's people like us that are doing more work in this country right now. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, because <laughs> I'm not trying to just pat myself on the back. I'm talking about you yourself, Darshan, uh, you know, Darshan Maharaja, uh, you know, so many other people that have been working really hard and putting pressure, keeping that pressure on. And it's, <laughs> well, the conservatives, they get themselves voted in and they do hardly anything. The liberals are actually doing something because there's an election coming up and they're worried about what's happening and they're actually addressing some of these issues. Like right now we have Justin Trudeau who gets on Twitter, <laughs> posts this, deletes it, then posts okay. it again. Uh, but whatever the reason for that was, Justin Trudeau saying we're granting 35% fewer international student permits this year and next year that number is going to go down by another 10%. Immigration is an advantage for our economy, but when bad actors abuse the system and take advantage of students, we crack down. Now, it was their government that created all the, the incentives for them to abuse stuff. Uh, it was their government that they called them lucrative assets and 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 brought this about. But this is this is what they're doing, and they're largely doing it because of well, you guessed it, guys like Darshan Maharaja commenting on this. PM Trudeau, when bad actors abuse immigration system and take advantage of students, we crack down. What crackdown? Has any action been taken against these said bad actors? If yes, when can we find the details? It's yeah. way too late to be gaslighting us, Mr. Trudeau. And of course, they're making announcements like today. Randy Bosanal when I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. You got to tell me I'm not French. I get these wrong all the time. B Boissonault. There you go. Saying. Perfect. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He made an announcement with Mark Miller, uh, and they're talking about this. I'll just let this play. Let me state that I've always been clear that the temporary foreign worker program is and has always been a, de a last resort measure and should never be used to replace Canadian workers who want the jobs, and it should not be used to um, suppress their wages. And so last month, the PM was clear and announced changes to the temporary foreign worker program, and those changes will come into effect September 26th. And I want to just review them because it's going to be important for the, the substance of my comments today. So these changes included reducing the cap from 20% to 10%, and in census metropolitan areas where the unemployment is higher than 6%, there's a refusal to process in the low-wage stream. I've also undertaken over the next now 60 days to come back to you all with our plans on the high-wage stream. The temporary no. foreign worker program is an accordion. It's meant to flex with the economy. When we have a high number of vacancies, we can bring in more people. And as the economy tightens, we close the accordion and we make it harder for people to come in because Mark and I and our government want those jobs to go to Canadians. We want them to go to people who live here. We want them to go to students. We want them to go to newcomers. We want them to go to people who want to take those jobs. And so we're working hard every day to make sure there's more jobs for Canadians. We're seeing um, a slight increase in unemployment, which is a natural result of the high interest rates, which are also coming down. And now with inflation at 2% and having come down over eight months, that's a critical piece to see a turn in the economy. And today we're making good on our promise to um, actually reduce the numbers in the temporary foreign worker program and to make sure that the program applies across the country. They're, they're, that they're, just is BS. Oh, I mean, the pat himself on the back for knowing how the things are going to play out as they play out. They're clueless and totally. they're, they're, they're listening to the polls. They're listening to what, what people are saying about the terrible job they've been doing. And now they're, they're listening to uh, the conservative side of Canada and going, what do we do now? What do we do now? Hey, yeah, yeah. What, what, what can we I do? I mean, uh, like, like go back to the, what, let, let, let's finish on Darshan's or Trudeau's quote, right? So Trudeau blames bad actors. 
as a, uses bad actors as a justification for reversing one of his bad policies. That's it, right? So, I mean, Danielle used her, Danielle used immigration as a justification to spend more money on schools because she fell behind on building new schools. So what a convenient excuse. Trudeau blames bad actors that have been highlighted by Darshan. Who are the bad actors? They're the schools that are doing this bullshit, but they're also the the, the immigration lawyers, the the people at, at the CRA that rubber stamp, whatever. Who are the like the fly by night schools that just popped up overnight? The Com you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of these, nobody's these, nobody's going to be punished for this. The, the bureaucrats be... that are rubber stamping it and saying, yeah, yeah, you're a, you're a, you're yeah. a, an educational yeah. facility. Absolutely, bring and, in and fifty thousand people this year. Like totally. this, this is what's been happening, and they're all on the take. They're all on the take. Convince me that they're not. And, and and then Randy's comments today were hilarious. Like, same thing. Oh, uh, inflation's coming down and unemployment is this. It's like, buddy, I like, man, your own government produces so much data. I pro I po posted a, uh, a, uh, a graph today. The ratio for every one, per for every job vacancy right now, there's two and a half people sitting there, not even applying for the jobs, sitting on their ass, doing nothing. And the government knows this and they report on it. And that ratio is the highest it's been since the pre-pandemic, since the pandemic. Nobody's working because they've made the problem so bad. There are tons of jobs out there, but nobody wants the jobs because they're unemployed. They'd rather sit on their ass and collect benefits and cheat the system. And who's doing it? These millions of people who've been brought in, they brought in people that were supposed to solve a problem and they're making the problem worse and they don't want to work. Like it's, 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 oh my God, like we could, we could talk about this all day long and analyze it and break it down. Uh, thankfully you have a hundred thousand followers. We're reaching a hundred thousand people, man. There's another 30 million, 40 million people that don't get this just well, Don't we just got to pound this one because people need to understand it. And it's a yep. two tiered problem. So you have you have people that are cheating the system and going through immigration through these extra legal means. Uh, this isn't proper immigration. This is temporary foreign workers and students. Temporary is the word and they're not using it in temporary ways. And this whole concept of, oh, well, we need them to fill temporary jobs. Yeah, but then they're staying. They're sticking yeah. around. And that's the problem. They're using it as a backdoor for immigration. There's another backdoor for immigration. And that's coming in and telling people, I can't go back to my country because it's unsafe there. And this is another thing that's been massive. And guess what? A lot of those people are coming in through Quebec, through Roxham Road. They're coming in right into Quebec. And Quebec's going, well, we don't want them. And guess what? Now that Jugmeet Singh has given up his position as the one propping up Trudeau, now the Bloc Québécois is saying, now we have terms. And what are our terms? You're going to stop giving us so many of these asylum seekers. You're going to start doling them out to the other provinces. And that was the deal and, that and, they struck. Yeah. And 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 actually, I, I can only speak about Alberta because it's so near and dear to me. Danielle Smith brought that up in her speech yesterday. As uh, she she doesn't want these um, she she she's blaming all, uh, Quebec now whatever it's so complicated but I want to get back to one thing guess what now yeah now Jagmeet I actually I can't believe I'm going to say this but I preferred when Jagmeet had a supply and confidence agreement with the Liberals because now the Liberals have an agreement with the Bloc Québécois and the Bloc is actually way worse than having an agreement there. The Bloc will hold us hostage, the, us being the rest of Canada, like never before. I mean, there's a non-confidence. They do not that's... care about Canada and nope. they're very, they're unabashed about it. They're totally. very, they'll straight up say it. Here's uh Blanchett saying this exactly. The same place as the Liberals. There is little fundamental difference between conservatives and liberals. For what? Because they are serving the same country, which is Canada, trying to seduce the same people. We don't have that obstacle. So we only serve the interests of Quebec. They only serve the interests of Canada against Quebec. So it is not up to me to choose who will continue to harm Quebec.
That's that's his that's his point of view on that. They don't care about Canada. But they how you, love how do you they digest the that? money? They love the money that we send them. They love the benefits of being part of Canada, but they don't care about Canada. Absolutely. I mean, at least at least he's honest. At least he's letting you know what kind of a snake he is, right? God, actually in French. Well, in, in, I, I heard okay, this in French, right? I I he literally said, I'm not gonna defeat the government because that would simply be replacing a tarantula with a viper We're talking about getting rid of Trudeau and Poiliev. Like he called them both brutal. And it's like, well, just then if they're both brutal, defeat them and send us to the polls and maybe we'll get new people. Uh, so Pierre has a contention there in Quebec. He's not very popular in Quebec. And that's no, true. He lost the, he lost the election on Monday, right? Yeah, yeah, they lost yeah, the election yeah. on Monday. Now it looks like it looks like across Canada, if you look at the polling, uh, you know, Pierre Polyev looks like he's on top, and I, uh, I had it, I had it just a minute ago, uh, but yeah, the polling looks like across Canada, liberals are fourth now, which is which is astonishing. We've never seen that in our history, in our nation's history. But the liberals are fourth, and now the Bloc Québécois are second. they they're, they're pretty they're, much second they're pretty much second and this is the this is the sentiment that they have i, I really got to showcase this because this is this shocked me when i heard this you make of that move by the conservative leader sort of trying to create a french canadian coalition and an english canadian coalition with the liberals well, uh, there's one thing mr podiev can do is read the numbers and he can see that in quebec he's not doing well at all he's still he's still third uh in in the polls um, and it's not improving at all from a poll to another. So he's trying desperately anything to, 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 make, some, to make some points in Quebec. Uh, the, the fact that he's third is interesting, but the, the, the numbers that are the most interesting about Mr. Poiliev in Quebec is that more than 75% of Quebecers do not want him as a prime minister. They, they don't trust him. They fear him. So that's a very important number that explains why the Conservatives are not making gains in Quebec. Uh, and I, I think it's understand, understandable that Mr. Poliev tries anything like associating the Bloc uh, to the Liberals, which is uh, comic. Right. No, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's comical. It, no, it, 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 okay, so that, that gentleman is correct. And I don't care, mm -hmm. right? That's, a, that's a, like, if, if the way it looks right now, if there was an election tomorrow, the Conservatives would win pretty much the whole country except Quebec, and mm -hmm. the rest of Canada would be Conservative, and Quebec would be a Bloc Québécois, but Quebec would then be the opposition. And a Bloc Québécois in opposition, I really don't give a shit. That's fine. You guys can be there all day long. Right now, the Bloc Québécois, with an alliance with the Liberals, is not in opposition. They're in... Um, they're in a coalition with the liberals, which is like super dangerous and, and they're desperate, right? Mm. They're two parties that are hanging on to dear life. So yeah, we just got to make it through the next few months or, or next year. There is a non-confidence vote in the house of commons on Tuesday. I don't, the, the way it works is once every several months, the, um, the, the, the opposition parties are allowed to control the agenda, they call it, or something like that. So they get to make uh, uh, bring forward motions that get voted on. So it is literally an opportunity for the conservatives to bring a non-confidence motion. What they're going to make that, I don't know. But the Bloc have already said they're voting against it. They're not going to defeat the government. So if I was Pierre, you got three, and, four and days now. they have now. more seats than the NDP. So Sure. Sure, but but what Pierre needs to do is he needs to come up with a really clever non-confidence motion, like um, like like you and I talked at the beginning of the show. Maybe he brings up a motion that says uh, we propose to um, to give immigration powers to the provinces. Okay, and then have 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 uh, Blanchette go. Ooh, uh, I'm against that. All right, go for it. Vote against it. Right. I mean. So, you know, we this week's not over in the non-confidence vote. Something, you know, hopefully something clever comes up. But otherwise, yeah. I mean, this week uh, there was a by-election in Montreal, which was interesting. 
um, yeah, the bloc won the by-election, which, which I take that as a victory for the conservatives. People say it's not a victory. It's like, absolutely, it's a victory. A a any anything that defeats the liberals. I mean, the liberals, a by-election, by the way, like is is an opportunity where, you know, you can bring in all the power, all the force on one writing, right? So the mm -hmm. liberals weren't scattered across the country, each running their own little battle. Every important minister visited Montreal LaSalle and, and campaigned. That minister, that candidate was so confident she was going to win the election. And then when the votes came in, she walked out and she, she so the liberals threw she a lot of money. Third. They came she in came third. in third. Absolutely. Yeah. So, who, who had that writing previously? No, she came in second. Sorry. No, she, she came, came in third. third. You're right. She came in third yeah. because the uh, man, it was a tight race, right? It was the concern. Uh, she had it. The liberals had it. And and then they lost it to both the NDP and the conservatives. Man, the NDP ran. Um, the NDP the ran. What's that? Oh, and sorry. The and the block. the block. Yeah. 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 The NDP ran a pro-Palestinian guy and he got a lot of votes, man. Oh, he got a lot Ooh, of votes. Why? Okay. Oh, That's... yeah, yeah. Daniel Sauvé was his name. I mean, on his advertising, he had the Palestinian flag. Like, he was he was full-on pro -pal I guess there's a lot of Palestinians or 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 Middle Eastern <laughs> Canadians in Montreal. But they but the, the Liberals lost. And so it's similar to when they lost Toronto-St. Paul. They, they lost a big seat in Fortress Toronto, and now they lost a seat in Fortress Montreal. So, oh, I got a dog barking. Um, and then Winnipeg, uh, the NDP held on to their seats, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, not not exactly how they planned it hey, to be going. Hey, out. Let's let's keep hitting on the liberals. Maybe you didn't hear this story today, but uh, Pablo Rodriguez announced that he's stepping down. He's a transportation oh, minister. Yeah, yeah, I caught that just before we went live. You mentioned that, and yeah. he he used he's he's Mister Bill C eighteen. I mean, he'll always go down as the guy who counted his chickens before they hatched. He was talking about the millions and millions of dollars the government was going to usurp Mo from all of these. Money. Yeah, yeah. Remember the uh, <laughs> South Park commercial? Un Mo money. Unbelievable. And he yeah. just had no idea when everybody was telling him, no, this is not how it's going to work. They're all going to just turn off the news. No, no, no. They're gonna. They're, why would they want to get rid of the news on their so far removed? Yeah. So he, he's. He stepped down now. Oh, not sooner. Yeah, not, he right? stepped down, and uh, uh, did he have a DUI infraction? Did he? Does he? Does he have a colorful past? I think he does. I, I don't I, know. I, He's a they, politician. They, I assume he would. Yeah, yeah, and they call him. Uh, well, he looks like Kenny Rogers, right? I mean, he's a uh, he's a uh, <laughs> sort of a French version of Kenny Rogers, but he's so he's just another kind of liberal uh, who's jumping ship. There, you know, they don't want to. They don't want to waste money on an election. Some of them want to distance themselves as, as sooner than later. They want to go get their jobs at the at the PR firms and the law firms and the banks or whatever. So you know they're all they're all slowly stepping down. Um, yeah, not a not a very good week for 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 Trudeau. I mean, Barry, there was some good news that he should have capitalized on. I mean, the inflation numbers came down. You and I know the numbers are garbage, right? I mean, inflation came down to I don't know two point two point four percent or something like that prices are still going up and and it's only math right the reason is 2.4 is because uh you know food and shelter are, are like 5.6 and six percent inflation and then shoes and clothing are like zero so when you average the two out you end up with a 2.4 percent inflation uh well it flubbed the numbers a little bit and then also the declining real estate market in canada that and this is across the yeah. board in fact uh, I've been talking about this on some of the videos. Canadian real estate prices dip further on weak in on weak demand, rising inventory. So basically, when those interest rates dri dipped, it was a trigger for a lot of people to put their houses on the market. They're not selling. No, they're not selling because people are wise. They're wise to this. Uh, oh yeah, okay. And then you're gonna raise those interest rates as soon as we get in. It's it's just incredible uh, where this is going. Going to the article and they they talk about the losses here. Just 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 this past year alone, over the last twelve months, home prices have generally weakened further. Annual growth remains negative with prices. 3.9% lower than last year. That means if you bought a house last year, your equity, you're 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 now thirty thousand dollars in the hole. That's if you that's, bought that house last year. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. And that's um, average. So if you're in Vancouver, you probably lost fifty to eighty grand. Yep. Which is insane. 
That's absolutely insane. Yeah, so, so people so, are, so the, are not looking at this economy like a healthy economy. No, and, and so the liberals, whatever. The liberals can't talk about this. This is not a talking point for them. I mean, uh, uh, I, I tweeted about this this week. I, I noticed again uh, Trudeau changed his language. Like, you remember how he used to be like when we were, you know, 15 years ago when the politicians wanted to talk about economy and how good the economy was going, they'd simply talk about unemployment and simple things like that. And everybody figured out what that those numbers are bullshit. Then they started talking about whatever. Lately, they got into, oh, debt to GDP. Then we figured out that's bullshit. So then they're like debt per or GDP per capita. We figured out that's bullshit. So then this week, they were like, uh, net foreign investment per capita. I'm like, again, who gives a shit? Like, wow, you're trying to convince me who just lost my house or just lost my job or, or can't afford groceries that, hey, things are going well because the per capita foreign investment is up like that means nothing oh and, and they're saying that it, you know wages are keeping pace with inflation it's no. not even close to true it's not no. even close to true and here's another scheme that they've got they say hey here's what we're gonna do we are going to relax some mortgage rules to tackle oh, yeah. housing crisis. We're yeah. going to make it so you can amortize your mortgage out to 30 years now. Hey, why not? Why not? Why not 40 years? Why not 50, 60, 70? Why not just do 99 years leases like China does? <laughs> I mean, you, you know, at, at some yeah, yeah. point, they might as well just say you'll own nothing and you'll be happy because that really, at the end of the day, is the slogan that they should be working on. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, boy, we, I'm looking at the clock. Hey, let's save some of this stuff for next week. I mean, I, I always have my little list, right? I always have, like, every day Marty goes on the internet and looks up at a couple of things. Next week, for me, what I'm looking forward to, Bank of Canada's third quarter report comes out. I can't wait to see how much money they've lost. And then, mm -hmm. uh, and then the CPP, Canada Pension Plan, their third quarter report comes out. Like, there's, you know... No, there's not a lot of good news, but let's end up on a funny note. Can you bring up the picture that's at the top of my Twitter feed? The picture of the toilet bowl? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Or do you want to not talk about this one? No, no, we'll, we'll get into it. Yeah, yeah. So this this was uh wow, wow. That's uh that's some clandestine work. Uh for those that don't know, the uh the Mossad. terrorist organization known as Hamas uh was uh was attacked recently uh so they they go around and they attack people um you know they make these plots and they attack people innocent civilians whatever uh and Mossad I guess I guess Mossad, is Mossad taking credit for this I think Mossad's taking credit for it yeah it, 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 let, it, let's let's backtrack just a little bit so what the, what the what these bad guys were doing well what these guys were doing is to try and avoid uh, having their network of communications, whatever, decrypted. They were using old technology. They're talking with pagers and old Motorola walkie-talkies. So and there was Masad. an order, a, my, a major order from Taiwan that was yeah. intercepted. And on its way over, um, some people cleverly opened those uh, pagers up and put uh, little C4 explosives <laughs> in them. And holy cow, that is Can insane. Jesus. So I think I think it was about twelve hundred people were injured. Nine people died. Yo. in in this. It, it's funny, but it's not funny. But it you know what? Funny, don't not mess, funny. Yeah. Funny, not funny. Don't me don't mess with Mossad, man. Holy smokes! Like you know, whenever an Iranian, uh, whatever nuclear scientist has a nasty bike accident or some Taiwanese guy goes missing eh, behind the scenes. If it's not the CIA or somebody like that, it's Mossad. Like they're bad dudes, man. Or not well, they're bad dudes and they're pretty sophisticated. Now, there was funny videos of this. I think AVE did a video, right? Like you he's a oh, friend of ours, right? And yeah. and where where he had his he has a he has his DeWalt uh drill and he's like sort of poking at it from a distance with a long <laughs> stick, you know, like you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's in it. You better start taking all this stuff apart. That is crazy. Uh, but how clandestine is that? Yeah, intercepted. And then they uh, they all went off at the same time. Uh, incidentally, it was like uh, they, they pager went off, looked like a, 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 a real message, and people were putting them to their face, and the then ultimate, they went off. The ultimate phishing scheme. <laughs> Hey, oh, your man. Amazon package hasn't been delivered. Click, boom. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Marty, where can people find you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, find me on Marty up north, folks. Uh, 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 Marty up north on Twitter. That's where you'll find me every day. And I appreciate you gave a little shout out to my uh, my video, my YouTube channel. Got a couple of people came for a visit. Always love comments wherever they are on Twitter or on YouTube. But uh, and we'll be together next week. And then it'll be my. We might not be. I'll let you know. I might. I'm supposed to go hunting on Thursday next week. I might leave a day early. It's looking like uh, it's cold out. Very very favorable conditions for hunting and i want to well if we have to maybe we can do a tuesday night we'll see sure sure yeah yeah okay. one way or another we'll have one for sure all right let's do this next week get your bingo cards for next week cheers folks <laughs>